Good morning, children. Today we are going to continue the second chapter of our changing earth. So, in the last videos, we have learned about the lithospheric plates and the earth's movements. So, first, let's have a recapitulation. So, lithospheric plates, as I said, lithosphere is broken into small pieces. They are known as lithospheric plates, which moves continuously. So, due to its movement, we see the different landforms in the earth. So, there are two types of movements inside and outside the earth. So, earth's movements are categorized in two groups. First is energetic movement and second is exogenic movement. As I said in the earlier video, endogenic is made up of the two words. It is a combination of the two words. One is endo and one is genic. Endo, it means within. Genic, which means origin. Means the endogenic forces which act inside the earth. There are two types of endogenic forces which act inside the earth. They are sudden forces and the slow forces. The sudden forces are earthquake and volcano, which erupt suddenly on the earth's surface, and slow forces which help in the mountain building. So this is all about endogenic movement, which act inside the earth. Next force, which act on the surface of the exterior, I repeat once again, the force which act on the surface of the earth that is exogenic forces. It is also formation of two words. One is exo. It means outside the earth or we can say surface of the earth. Genic means the origin from where the force work or act. That is exogenic force. So exogenic forces are the forces which act on the earth's surface. They are erosion activities and the deposition activities which forms rivers, seas, glaciers and even the wind. These are all are the agents of erosional and the deposition activities. So in the last video along with this we have studied about the gradation. Gradation means the whole process of wearing away of the earth's crust by the external forces is called as gradation. I will repeat once again, gradation means the whole process of wearing away the earth's crust by the external forces is called as gradation. So, there are two types of gradation activities. One is degradation, which means erosion, and aggradation, which means deposition. So, erosion, as I said, erosion means carrying away of the sediments due to the wind, air, water, etc. And deposition means filling up land. I will repeat once again. Erosion means carrying away the surface or earth's crust due to the forces such as wind, water, etc. Then next is aggradation, that is filling up of the surface, means deposition activities. So let's start with the weathering, which are also like degradation. These are types of the degradation, one is weathering and one is erosion. Weathering, it refers to the gradual disintegration of the rocks on the earth's surface by the atmospheric agents like temperature, moisture, plant, animals, frost, human beings, etc. I do repeat once again, weathering, it refers to the gradual disintegration, means breaking up of the rocks on the earth's surface due to the natural agents such as wind, air, plant, animals, etc. So it occurs due to the chemical and mechanical forces or processes. Next is erosion. Erosion is the wearing away of the landscape by different agents like water, wind, ice sheet, etc. I do repeat once again, erosion is the wearing away of landscape by the natural agents such as wind, air, ice, etc. So these agents carry away the eroded material and eventually deposit them in the depression to form a new landscape. So how does weathering differ from the erosion children? So generally people believe that both weathering and erosion are same. But in reality weathering includes only hmm. so generally people think that both weathering and erosion are same but in reality weather and weathering and erosion 
are different. Weathering includes the disintegration of the rocks. It means breaking up of the rocks due to the natural forces. Transportation of these decayed material is not a part of weathering because it is called as erosion. It carries away with the, the breaking parts of the rock or it can be like whatever comes in its way that is erosion. So it is included in the process of erosion. So understood children, weathering and erosion both are different from each other. So now let's study about the landforms which are formed due to the weathering and the erosion. So first we'll study about the work of running water or we can say rivers. As you all know, water is not stagnant, it's always in the movement. So a stream of fresh water that flows by a natural channel and remains confined with the banks and finally outflows into the sea, ocean or lake or in any other water body or river is known as a river. River is most important geomorphic agent. It creates a number of erosional and deposition landforms. So in this way, now we are going to study about the erosional landforms which are formed due to the erosional activity. Hmm. So here we will study about the erosional landforms. It means the landforms which are formed due to the erosional activity such as river valleys, waterfall, meadows, and the oxbow. These all are the river water oh, sorry, these all are the landforms which are formed due to the erosion activities. So first let's start with the river valley. So river valley, valley means as you all know, valley is a place, means V-shaped place which are found between the two mountains or the landform which is found between the two mountains that is called as a valley. Okay. So river valley, these are the most significant or we can say the important erosion landform carved out by the rivers due to the flowing water of the river. These are formed in the mountainous regions as I said earlier, these are formed between the mountainous places. They are result of the vertical erosion by the rivers as I showed here where the water flows continuously, the river flows in the mountainous river. So due to that erosion activity, these valleys are formed. So these valleys have steep slopes. This is all about the river valley. Next is waterfall. As you all know children, waterfall, you want to visit waterfalls now, um, the Joe Fall in our country, which is the highest waterfall in the world. Okay. So waterfall, waterfall are formed because of the sudden breaks in the course of the river or we can say the force of the water on the mountain spaces. A waterfall can be defined as a vertical drop of the bottom of enormous volume from a great hand, as is shown here, which flows from a mountainous. So, as I said, waterfalls are formed because of sudden breaks in the course of the river. A waterfall can be defined as a vertical drop of water of enormous volume from the great hand, as I have shown here, which a waterfall or river which flows from a mountainous region. It flows with a high speed or we can say with the force which forms a waterfall. So it is very helpful in the production of the hydroelectricity and even it provides water for the irrigation in some places like plains and all. So waterfall is also a form of landform which is formed due to the erosional activity. So uh, do you know the significant waterfalls of the world, the important waterfalls in the world? Yes, some of them are named here. First is Angel Fall, the highest waterfall in, located in the Venezuela in the South America. Next is Niagara Waterfall which lies in the border of the USA and Canada in North America. Next is Victoria Waterfall which lies on the border of the Zambia and Zimbabwe in Africa. Next is Joe Waterfall which is famous in our country is situated in India in Asia. Next is Yasmite Fall which lies in the California in USA in North America. These all are the important waterfalls of the world. So next we will study about the meanders. So after waterfall comes the meanders. So meander means when the river enters plain areas. It twists and turns as I shown in the picture. When it twists and turns, it takes a shape like bend. It forms a large bend. Those are known as meanders. See children, these are the bends which we can see in the plains and all. These are called as meanders. Okay children. So meander which comes 
from the Greek word. This word is derived from the Greek word Meandros, an old name of the river in Asia Minor that is now known as the Meandros. Or we can call it as a meander means a winding path or a course of a river. This is all about the meander. Now next we will study about the Oxford Lake. Oxford Lake as I said, when the river flows, this will cut off from the main stream and it takes a shape like this in the plain areas. These are called as the Oxford Lakes. This is also an result of the erosion activity. So Oxford Lakes due to the continuous erosion and deposition along the sides of the meander, the end of the meander loop comes closer and closer. In the due course of time, the meander loops cut off from the main river and forms a cut off lake in this way. It is called as a Oxbow Lake.